Gentlemen, welcome back to the Electric Open Bench, also known as the Wife's Sewing Room. I got something here, a brand new tool, gonna blow your friggin' mind. Uh, I got to show you how to use it to be an electrical troubleshooting whiz. However, I want you to be forewarned, this is gonna make you look like a genius. You'll be beating them off with a stick. I mean, the ladies love a big cerebellum. Uh, normally when I get a fancy new toy, I like to take it apart to see what makes it chooch. Of course, in this case, I, I'm lucky I don't need to. Somebody else has already done that. Somebody far more qualified, Dave Jones of the EUV blog. So there's a link down below if you're interested in, and of course you are, seeing uh, lepton camera sensors, depolarizing dingle arm brackets and the like. All right, so we had the amuse bush. Now we're going to get right into the meat of her. Now when you do electrical troubleshooting, you will notice that 99% of your problems are going to be bad connections and faulty wiring. So this tool is going to help you quickly find this pro those problems and it's actually a thermometer. Well, I'll get into that. So when you have a loose connection or a bad wire in a circuit, that adds resistance to the circuit. And previous to having this, the way you would find that is by using an ohmmeter and checking the resistance of the circuit or the wire or the connection. However, in a lot of cases, it doesn't work and I'll show you that. So essentially, when you have a bad wire or a dirty connection, what you're adding is a big old resistor into the circuit. Here we have the wires of the circuit that we normally would have and we've got a bad connection. Uh, standing in for that is a resistor. Now we've got our DMM set up here and if we probe it, we can see it's 50 ohms. What happens if you probe a wire and there's no resistance, but there's still a problem? Because that happens all the time. Okay, so I turned on the FLIR, and this is interesting. It's, it's built as a thermometer, infrared thermometer, not as an infrared camera. Uh, as you can see here, there's no values to this scale. And if you look, the uh, camera is actually up top, there's my finger there, and it's not registering the heat. It's actually registering off a lower sensor down below where the cursor is. What this is going to allow you to do though is pinpoint hot spots. So as you can see, there's the resistor. It looks pretty hot. We'll get right in there and take a shot of it. 30C. Okay, well that's no big deal because we had our our digital multimeter on there and we could see the resistance so this is a $500 waste of money, right? Wrong. Alright, here we got a wire in a circuit that's intermittent. It's working sometimes and other times it's not working. That's one of the most difficult problems to troubleshoot. So when you're troubleshooting, you do the easiest thing first and the easiest thing is to ohm it out. Uh, also, you could progress and do a voltage drop across that but of course the thing has to be energized in order to do a voltage drop. So, we're just gonna ohm it out, uh, make sure that it's got good continuity, 0 0.4 ohms, and if you were on your continuity test, if you were someplace quiet, like the bench, you'd be able to hear that, and there's continuity there. So, you'd move on to another part of the circuit because this is obviously good. But let's put this under load and see what happens. Right, so we're just going to leave this set up. We can consider this is our working circuit in our whatever, dirty old logging truck or 80 year old JCB backhoe. So I'm going to use my venerable and much beloved uh, HP 6255A dual power supply. We're going to run a typical 12 volts and maybe say an amp through that wire. We'll go 12 volts. We got an amp going through that. Now let's turn on the rig. Let's turn on the rig. Let's turn on the frigamathig. There we go. You see the wire there. Now if we look at the alligator lead, it's not getting hot and it's an even smaller wire. So what's going on? Well, that wire is acting as a resistor and it's giving off heat. That means the wire is faulty. So we zoomed in here and you can see I booby trapped this. We got broken wires in there. So this could be worn out. It could be physically damaged. It could be just broken from weeble wobbling around. Right, so here's a very typical Deutsch connector. That's, you'll see this in automotive applications and trucks and equipment and all sorts of stuff. So the way you would normally check 
this connection is you would have the proper spoons and you would go in through the back door here and check you'd own this out and also uh, make it live and then check the voltage drop across there now, of course the problem is the guys that work on these are generally mechanics and not electricians or or in some countries auto electricians so they're not going to have the proper spoons to go in there and what they're going to do is they're going to contaminate this with the green death by taking their pointy sharpened probe end and their crappy home gamer meter this is not a crappy home gamer meter but you know the crappy ones i'm talking about with the not the silicone but the vinyl leads that don't work yeah anyway so they're gonna take that and they're gonna poke a spot in the insulation where the green death can get in and then you're gonna have to go in there a couple months later and rewire the whole works now not to judge i mean we've all done it it's not right uh and hopefully you learn from other people's mistakes because it you pierce the insulation you've just given a death sentence to that wire just so you know the creeping green death will get it eventually anyway i digress i know this is a bad connection i'm going to power this up and we're going to take a shot with the ir and of course if you're checking just for power you open this up you test to see if you got power there of course there's power there because now you've broken that resistance then when you go to put it back together chances are it's going to work properly yada 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 intermittent problem don't know what it is guy comes back in a month he's got the green death you look like an asshole okay so we got this powered up now just under a moderate load of uh, 0.5 amps and you can see here she's hotter than a two dollar pistol clearly something wrong with that connector we didn't even have to put our meter on it and the interesting thing is you can also take a snapshot it saves it to an SD card you can put it in your YouTube video or show your customer or she who must be obeyed in order to justify the $500 purchase what you can also do is go around and, and take shots and save them for later so that uh, when you think there's a problem you can go back and look at your old pictures to see if it was running hot before so this is going to be a relatively cheap and easy way to quickly check for hot spots on your problem items once you find your problem spots you can go ahead and use your meter to confirm that your hypothesis is correct okay i'm going to show you this but i don't want any slack jawed idiots uh, calling me up saying they got electrocuted you know if you don't know your ass from your elbow and if you could find your ass if if you don't know if it's punched ream drilled or pressed don't go around sticking your probes in electricity that you have no idea about because you're gonna get yourself some melted fillings in a hurry so that's my public service announcement for today what you're gonna do is you're going to uh, hook up your leads to the section of wire that you think is bad you're gonna have it de-energized while you do this and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna energize it and you're gonna see the voltage drop through that wire so we can see here we got uh, 1.8 volts DC drop we can see we almost got a 2 volt drop there so we know that between this lead and this lead there is a problem now you're not going to be able to use the heat for signaling and computer and stuff like that little ones and zeros you know you still got to go ahead and look for the puddle of ones and zeros under the machine but the heat is going to help you with high power items you know high over say half an amp but for instance if this were a 12 volt signal wire and there was a 2 volt drop across here we would know that the computer would not like that and probably wouldn't be working uh, all the time It'd be intermittent fault anyway I digress so please don't go out and electrocute yourself well no that's not true I warned you if you electrocute yourself I'm not my brother's keeper We'll send you a Darwin Award. So this is a real skookum tool. It feels good. It's uh, urethane, soft urethane in the hand. Uh, it's a quality tool. You feel it. No, no rattle trap. Nothing. Uh, the only pain in the ass is you got to hold this button down quite a while to get it to, to chooch on there. And uh, already driven my wife completely nuts. Uh, she's a no-fly zone now. Not allowed to uh, take snapshots of her with this anymore. And. Managed to find a couple uh, leaks in the house there, some cold air getting in, so that'll be good to fix that before winter. So I'm going to do some more vids with this. Uh, we're going to troubleshoot some bearings. We're going to troubleshoot some hydraulics. Thanks a lot for watching.
Keep your stick on the ice. Hey, uh, baby doll, I was looking for my IR gun downstairs and there it was, gone. Do you have any I... Aha! What are you doing with my $500 precision instrument? 500 bucks? <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> hey, is that a pie crust you're making? Well, galoot, I had to make sure your pie crust was gonna chooch. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome back to the electrical bench also known as the wife's sewing room. I got something here, a brand new tool. Gonna blow your friggin' mind. Uh, I got to show you how to use it to be an electrical troubleshooting whiz. However, I want you to be forewarned. This is gonna make you look like a genius. You'll be beating them off with a stick. I mean, the ladies love a big cerebellum. Uh, normally when I get a fancy new toy, I like to take it apart to see what makes it chooch. Of course, in this case, I, I'm lucky I don't need to. Somebody else has already done that. Somebody far more qualified, Dave Jones of the EEV blog. So there's a link down below if you're interested in, and of course you are, seeing uh, lepton camera sensors, depolarizing ding alarm brackets and the like. All right, so we had the amuse bush. Now we're gonna get right into the meat of her. Now when you do electrical troubleshooting, you will notice that 99% of your problems are gonna be bad connections and faulty wiring. So this tool is gonna help you quickly find this pro those problems and it's actually a 